I'm makeup artist Lisa Eldridge and I'm excited to be part of the Vogue Beauty Festival for 2021. Today I thought I'd show you how to do the perfect red lip and I'm a firm believer that anyone and everyone can look amazing in red lipstick. It never goes out of style and it's something that I think it just lights up your face, it makes a statement, it makes you feel good, confident and it's there's just such a pleasure, I think, in applying makeup as well. So I want to show you a couple of different ways to wear a red lip and some different tips that I have. So starting with the preparation. So I actually did a little gentle exfoliation on my lips. My preferred method of this is when you're cleansing your face in the morning, whether you're washing your face or using a cleanser, to just use a flannel or a muslin cloth use it with some warm water and then just gently buff over your lips. I just find that it, it not only gets rid of any dry skin, it sort of helps to moisturize as well and it brings the circulation into your lips so it helps to plump them up naturally. Um, another thing that I like to do is to use lip balm. So I apply lip balm right at the beginning of my makeup. So I put this on just before I started doing my makeup and then I let it sink in. So while I was doing my base, doing my eyes, all of my other makeup, so it had time to sort of settle in. I think the thing that you don't want to do is to have a very thick layer of lip balm on before you start your lipstick. So a good tip is if you feel like you still have a lot on, just gently blot. So next on to color, there are so many different reds that you can choose from. So there are orangey reds like this, deep reds, classic reds, blue toned reds, you name it, it exists. So my favorite type of lip probably that suits everyone is a neutral and slightly blue lip. I love this kind of red because firstly it's very classic, it looks very good on anyone who's got cool undertones. So if you have some blue or red or purple in, in your skin, it will sit really well. But it also looks really, really good on olive undertones and yellow and warm undertones as well because it really pops. I also love an orangey based red lip. Now a lot of people get scared of that. It works really well with warm undertones, it naturally sits. If you have a lot of redness in your skin and particularly if you have cool undertones, I think you can still wear um, an orangey red lip. You just need to neutralize the blue or red tones in your skin with your concealer and with um, some foundation first. But you, I, I do believe that everyone can wear every type of lip color. And as for the deeper reds, it really depends on your preference really. If you love that really deep red look, it's very vintage looking, it's gorgeous, it's glamorous. Um, again, it will just be making sure that the rest of your makeup is in balance. So it might just need that mean that you need a little bit more blush, or it might mean that you need a little bit less eye makeup if you're going for a very dark red. But this is A, personal preference, and B, depending on what suits you. So I'm gonna start with a really classic red lip using a lip liner. And this is how I like to apply my red lipstick when I want it to look really perfect, really defined, and to last a long time. So I'm gonna start with a really, really classic neutral blue undertoned red. And I'm going to show you how I like to apply it and use a lip pencil as well. And this is if you want that beautifully defined, perfect red lip. It also means it'll last a long, long time. So I'm going to use my True Velvet lipstick in Velvet Ribbon. And I'm going to start with a lip brush. Now what I like to do is take a small amount to start with and I like to create thin layers. For me, this means the makeup lasts so much longer and whenever I do my clients for the red carpet, if I give them a red lip, they will always tell me the next day that their lipstick stayed on for the whole event, not just the red carpet, the premiere, the movie premiere, but the after party as well. And that's because I employ these tactics. So I use a really, really um, small amount on the brush and I start to really push it into the lips. And I think this is so important. It's not just about putting it on top of the lips, it's really about getting it into those, almost like every little area of the skin. It's like creating a stain of red. 
so it's only a small amount. I also don't worry about the shape at this point, so just follow your natural lip line. Even if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because you're going to use a pencil. Just really working it in. So that's my first stain and that is really almost inside the lips. I'm going to give a light blot. Now I like to use my lip pencil. The reason I like to do it this way around is that once you have colour on your lips you're able to really see the shape. So sometimes when you do your pencil first and you're looking at a lip, a lip lips without any colour on. It's quite hard to imagine what they'll look like. So you draw the line around the outside, but when you fill it in, it's not the perfect shape. So I like to, at this stage, just have a really good look in the mirror and then make a decision about where I would like to make my lips look fuller. If I have some imbalance, maybe one side is a little higher than the other. Just have a look at your lips and decide maybe, okay, I'd like to make my lower lip a little fuller, for example. So now I start to pencil. Another reason it's good to do it this way round is that you're able to really blend the pencil into the stain that you've already created. So it means that for, if for any reason when the makeup starts to wear off or you've been drinking and eating, it you, you will still have your full red lip intact. It's not going to be that the lipstick is going to wear off and then you're left with this line around the outside. Because as you're building up the line, you're blending it into the lips like this. When you're using a matte lipstick, then you're able to really draw actually quite a little bit outside, a lot actually outside the, the edge of the lip because it's not going to catch a highlight, it's not gonna catch the shine. So you can really deceive the eye by drawing quite a lot outside like this. So once you finish penciling, you're completely happy with the shape, then you can go back in with your lipstick. Either you can apply your next layer straight from the bullet, or you can use your lip brush again. This time you can put plenty of lipstick on because you have your shape that you want, you have a really good stain underneath, you know your lipstick's gonna last and you're really happy with the shape. So. This time you're just filling in.
Then to finish off, take your tissue again. Take it thinner, so take your tissue almost in half. So it's really, really thin. And just block the inside. And then very, very gently across the top. Nothing actually comes off, but it just sets it. That will stop the lipstick getting on your teeth. Yeah, and that's it. The next thing I like to do is, because a red lip can sometimes drain your face a little bit, I like to take a touch of the red lipstick. You can take it off the back of your hand. You can even dab on your lips. And just to use that color to bring a similar color of blush onto the cheek. It just ties the whole look together and makes it look really fresh and modern. It also means that the blush will perfectly match with your lipstick. And voila, that's the perfect red lipstick. So that's it. I can guarantee that all of those tips are tried and tested over many years working with my A-list clientele and they really work. You will create the most perfect shape, the most impactful red lip and the most long lasting red lip. So go and try it now. Let me know how you get on. Thank you so much to Vogue Beauty Festival for having me and I'll see you all soon.